Mayor Work, Privacy Advocate and Program Director at IDME, joins us now to discuss how she says scammers are using social media, professional profiles, and job recruitment websites to steal identity and exploit businesses. So very important topic. Thank you for joining the show today. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about social engineering attack. What exactly is that? Yeah, so social engineering and identity, online identity theft are as old as the internet itself. Um, but what's different is that cyber criminals have become really sophisticated. So now they're weaponizing social media platforms and fake job sites to steal your information. And they're doing this because under the pandemic unemployment program, almost every American was potentially eligible for uh, unemployment. And mm -hmm. that created this hugely lucrative opportunity for these criminals to amass as many victims as possible. And what they found was this system worked. And so they're going to continue to do it. Right. Well, how can we spot a fake job listing or benefit website? Great question, Jordan. So it's really difficult to do, and that is designed that way um, for a reason. Criminals mm -hmm. don't want you to be able to spot these, so they look real. And I'm going to parrot my 10th grade English teacher here and say the number <laughs> one thing to do is to proofread. So look for any misspellings in the URL or any links that you're sent. Um, as an example, a couple of weeks ago, I got a text message for Gov Home Relief. And when I looked at it, the URL said govhomereliefgov.com. And mm -hmm. I did not click that link. <laughs> yeah, that sounded a little suspicious. So if we just do our due diligence, we might be able to find, find those little things like that. In what ways can technology help businesses, though, fight these type of cyber attacks? Yes, so IDME partners with government agencies to prove that you are who you say you are online. And at the height of the pandemic, we were stopping about 45,000 of these attacks and scams per week. And we were oftentimes alerting individuals that they had actually been the victim of a scam and working with them to reverse engineer and see how they'd been scammed in the first place. So instituting identity verification and strong identity verification that meets standards is a first step to stopping these from occurring. Well, what other steps can consumers take to better protect their identity? Sure, Jordan. So I tell these to my dad all the time, but the number one thing to do is to make sure all of your social media profiles are set to private. That's how criminals are learning about your interests. They're learning about things you like, and then they can try to scam you that way. Mm -hmm. So set those to private. Make sure that if someone reaches out about $10,000 that you've won or something like that, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably not true. That has definitely happened to me. I had someone DM me on my Instagram saying, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm doing a random, you know, um, giveaway for my followers. But that that a page had been hacked because it yes. was a legit page that I followed. And so I was like, no, I don't. this seems fishy. So, yeah, again, with that due diligence, we need to kind of realize uh, on our own as well as have help from ID me. Right. So where can we go for more information? So for more information on social engineering and stopping identity theft, you can go to id.me slash stop the scam. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for helping protect us. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for having me. Of course. And if you'd like to see this segment again, just head to our website, firstcoastliving.net.